how to create the perfect workout program in four minutes or less. Yo, what about this Tex fam? My name is Shlomi Kleinman, and I am an ACE certified personal trainer and a certified nutritionist. So today we are going to learn about the components that we need to have in mind when we are creating a workout. And if we have these components in mind, it's as simple as one, two, three, we target everything we need to target in our workout. Now this video is super good and useful for both beginners and intermediates and even advanced lifters alike, because I'm sure there are a lot of components here that we may not be aware of. Now, there are many different variations to these rules or these guidelines, but I'm gonna give you one of the most common, simple guidelines to follow, and that's the five split. This is the one that the American Council on Exercise teaches. So there are five basic movement patterns that we need to focus on or have in our training routine when creating a workout program. And they are, get ready. Number one, upper body pushing. So things like bench press, shoulder press. Number two, upper body pulling. So things like rows or even perhaps rear delt flies, some variation like that or pull downs or pull ups or chin ups, whatever it may be. So number one is upper body pushing. Number two is upper body pulling the op the opposite. Number three is core movements. So rotation or anti rotation movements. So these are things that will often target the core. So let's say I'm doing core twists or hay balers or wind or windmill or wood chop exercises. Those are good. If you're not sure what those two are, Google them. Those are great exercises for the core. Another so those are example of rotation exercises. Another example, an example of anti-rotation exercises would be the dead bug or bird dogs. Go Google those if you're not sure what they are. They're great anti-rotation exercises where we're trying to prevent rotation. That's anti-rotation. And rotation is where we're intentionally trying to rotate. So that's category number three, rotation or anti-rotation. Category number one is upper body pushing and category number two is upper body pulling and category th number three is rotation or anti-rotation exercises. Category number four is single leg slash lunge movements. So anything where we're doing, where we're exercising our legs, but they're not side by side. They're, we're either exercising one leg at a time, like for example, maybe step ups or single leg bridges or lunges or pistol squats. Those are good examples of single leg slash lunge movements, or even single leg balancing exercises. You Balancing exercises, just as a side point, super useful, great types of exercises to incorporate. They're great for neuromuscular education, neuromuscular training. Highly recommend, especially if you're an athlete. That's just a side point. And category number five is bend and lift movements. So things like squats, deadlifts, good old fashioned bridges, these are things where our feet are side by side and and we're exercising our legs. So category number one to refresh is upper body pushing. Category number two is upper body pulling. Category number three is for the middle of the body, rotation and anti-rotation exercises. Category number four and five both target the legs. So category number four is single leg slash lunge movements. And category number five is bend and lift movements. So the first two categories, one and two, upper body pushing and upper body pulling, they're for the upper body. Category number three is for the middle, the core, and categories number four and five are for the lower body. And with that, I hope you all had an amazing day. And if you incorporate all of these things into your workout routine, then you're gonna have a well-rounded workout routine. And just as a side point, as a personal trainer, I see a lot of people training upper body pushing a lot more than upper body pulling. Now that is something that can very easily lead to imbalances and shoulder injuries. Injuries. I've personally gotten injured from doing that when I was a beginner before I knew what I was talking about because I never had anybody to give me advice otherwise. It's very important to make sure that we're training upper body pulling just as much and perhaps even more than upper body pushing. Maybe a little bit, not so much. 
that's just a side point, side tip. I feel it's important to get out there. With that, I hope you all have a great day. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. My contact information is below. Shoot, feel free to shoot me a text on WhatsApp, a regular text message, whatever it may be. And I hope you all have an amazing day. Peace out.